There are many strategies that we can use to maintain youthful, healthy-looking skin, and this video goes through the evidence behind those methods. I want to stress that looking after the skin, it's not just for vanity reasons. By looking in the mirror and seeing a young, wrinkle-free person, it can make us feel young and subconsciously encourage us to continue looking after ourselves, so go for that run, maintain that good diet. And we can see evidence of this in a 2012 review showing that facial appearance and skin wrinkling, it does reflect the chances of going into extreme old age, and it also reflects the risks of succumbing to heart disease independently of chronological age, smoking, and body mass index. Looking after our skin then, it is important, so let's dive into the data. Before we look at specific strategies for the skin, I want to emphasize how important diet is. So if we've got a diet that's high in sugar with too many calories, that is not going to be good for our skin health. So we need to make sure that the basics are done first. So we want a great diet that's low in sugar, low in salt, and has many vegetables in it. It's the same with exercise. Exercise is so important for the rest of our body, and our skin health reflects that. We want to maintain a healthy body weight. We want adequate sleep that's high quality. Daily meditation to make sure that our mental health is optimal. And we want to make sure that there's no smoking and minimal or no alcohol. Those strategies must be addressed first before anything specific to the skin. Now that we've got that general health advice out the way, let's look specifically at skin, and I want to start by looking at the clinical guidelines that I use in my practice. So normal aging of the skin, it leads to decreased elasticity and reparative responses. These changes are separate to those due to sun exposure, or so-called photo-aging. So there's two separate things that we're trying to address here. One is normal aging of the skin, and the other one is photo-aging, or aging from the sun. Let's start with normal aging. So the epidermis, or the outer layer of the skin, it becomes thinner, resulting in fragility of the skin. So why does the skin become thinner? Well, as we age, the amount of collagen in the skin, it decreases by around 75% with age, and the remaining collagen is fragmented and disarrayed. But the human data suggests that we can improve the collagen in our skin. So we've got a 2020 review that looked at collagen supplementation in 10 separate clinical studies. And they could see that all of the included studies reported beneficial effects of hydrolyzed collagen supplements on skin health parameters, including moisture, elasticity, and wrinkle number. And importantly, there were no inconsistencies about the collagen supplementation and skin health between the included studies. So personally, I supplement with 10 grams of hydrolyzed collagen every day, so I mix this either with my morning coffee or smoothie. The next supplement I take is hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is present in every connective tissue and organ, including the skin. However, the quantity of hyaluronic acid in the skin, it also decreases due to aging. Encouragingly though, it looks like hyaluronic acid supplements, they can be absorbed into our skin. And to explore this idea, we've got a 2021 double-blind placebo-controlled study that ran over 12 weeks. And what we can see is that wrinkles and skin elasticity they were significantly improved in the hyaluronic acid group compared to placebo. So I take 200 milligrams of high molecular weight hyaluronic acid every day. The next strategy that I use is retinoic acid creams. So again, coming back to my clinical guidelines, we've got that topical administration of the retinoic acid creams. They appear to reverse many of the age-related changes of the skin. So for example, there's a nine-month trial of daily treatment with topical tretinoin cream, and it resulted in the outer layer of the skin thickening and improvements in collagen health. Therefore, these age-related changes, they appear to be reversible. Those are the main strategies that I use to slow down and even reverse the age-related changes in my skin. But let's now have a look at photo-aging, so aging because of sun exposure. So like we've gone through already, photo-aging is the result of chronic or long-term sun exposure and recurrent damage by the sun's ultraviolet light. Photo-aging, not physiological aging which we've already talked about, produces most of the cosmetically undesirable changes in the skin. The photo-aged skin looks wrinkled, lax, yellowed, rough, and sometimes leathery. So remember, prevention is always better than treatment. So how can we prevent sun damage to our skin? Well, the first thing is to just avoid sunlight. So protection from the sun, including sun avoidance, and use of sunscreen and protective clothing is the first line defense against photo-aging for all skin types. 
Ultraviolet radiation tends to peak between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. during the summer months. Water, snow and concrete can reflect up to 90% of the UV rays. Staying away from the sun in peak hours or seeking shade may considerably reduce sun exposure. The other thing that these guidelines recommend is broad spectrum sunscreens which provide protection against UVA and UVB radiation. So to demonstrate the benefits of sunscreen, we've got a 2016 trial that took 32 people and applied broad spectrum sunscreen for 52 weeks to the entire face. What they found is that photoaging parameters were improved significantly from baseline as early as the 12 week mark and continued to improve at the 52 week mark. Now, the only objection that I've seen to sunscreen is around safety. Specifically, does our skin absorb the sunscreen into our circulation? Well, the available evidence suggests that most inorganic sunscreens have an excellent safety profile and are without significant absorption. So for those people who are concerned about the absorption of sunscreens, making sure that we only use sunscreens that contain inorganic ingredients can be recommended. But the next thing that comes up is if we're trying to avoid the sun to prevent that sun damage to our skin, then surely we're going to be low in vitamin D. Because the skin plays a crucial role in producing vitamin D, and the levels of vitamin D that can be produced by the skin, it decreases with age. This is one of the reasons why I supplement with vitamin D between 2000 and 4000 units every day. So we've gone through the main strategies to maintain youthful looking skin, but for those people that want to take it a step further, there are some other treatments available. So the first one is Botox. Botox, it paralyzes the facial muscles to prevent wrinkles from happening. The only real objection that I can see against Botox is for vanity reasons, but again, we want to make sure that we're looking after our skin. The data seems to be quite clear, that if we protect our skin and reduce wrinkles, that seems to correlate with us feeling healthier and therefore adopting healthier lifestyle choices. There's also other strategies, specifically non-ablative skin resurfacing for skin rejuvenation, and this involves the use of devices that improve the physical characteristics of aging by heating specific targets in the skin. Examples of this include vascular lasers, intense pulsed light, infrared lasers, infrared light sources, and radio frequency devices, as well as photodynamic therapy. Overall, there are many evidence-based ways to maintain youthful looking skin and once again, I can't stress this enough, it's not just about vanity reasons. If we look after our skin, we feel younger, we're more likely to adopt healthier lifestyle choices. And we can see the interesting association that if we've got healthy looking skin, it seems that that's associated with lower rates of heart disease. So please let me know in the comment section, what strategies do you use to maintain youthful looking skin?